Why do we ride coasters? To overcome our fears? Bragging rights? Or because they're a lot of fun? Here's a better question. Why do we ride coasters that cause us pain? Okay, coasters, I can take it from here. This one's easy. We do it for the credits, duh. Big shout out to OK Coasters for recording that intro. I wanted to give him a shout out off the top because he seriously produces some of the best written, best filmed, and best edited coaster content out there. So if you like my channel, check out his. The link's in the description. But don't go anywhere just yet. We have some business to take care of right now. For every fun, thrilling coaster out there, there's a poorly designed or old coaster that could use some track work. And those imperfections in the design will inflict more pain than fun. Sometimes the pain can come from an awesome element, so not all of these are terrible experiences. Just about every manufacturer is guilty of bringing the pain, and we're gonna call them out today. These are each manufacturer's most painful coasters. Let's kick this off with B&M a manufacturer known for making smooth and graceful rides. No B&M, not even you get a pass, not even close. B&M coasters can inflict pain in many ways. For example, Riddler's Revenge and Green Lantern are stand-up coasters. Need I say more? One of their more popular models in recent years is the Wing Coaster. The vest restraints on these can really tighten, and on Gatekeeper, Thunderbird, and Wild Eagle, they come down so much that they really pinch my thighs. I don't have huge thighs or anything, but sometimes sitting on the brake run can get really painful. I didn't forget about you, X-Flight. The last time I rode this, the vest was so tight on my torso that I couldn't breathe. There are also the individual painful experiences, like the front row ride I got in Hyder the Revenge where it felt like the train was riding on jagged rails, or getting a front row ride on Fury 325 in the pouring rain where covering my face with my hoodie couldn't even save me. Okay, this one isn't B&M's fault, but it still hurt like crazy. But my official pick for the most painful B&M is going to be Scream at Six Flags Magic Mountain. This probably isn't B&M's fault either. It's more likely a maintenance issue, but the B&M rattle is a real thing, and when it's bad, it's real bad. There's no fighting it. The train will just shake like crazy when the train hits the valleys and cause a headache. Scream consistently has this problem, and it makes it a not very pleasant experience. One of the oldest manufacturers actually makes some of the smoothest rides out there, the defunct German manufacturer Schwarzkopf. These rides have held up incredibly well. I don't really have any complaints from the dozen Schwarzkopf on my coaster count. Sometimes the pain a ride can inflict isn't necessarily a bad thing. For example, Shockwave at Six Flags Over Texas flings you into your little unpadded lap bar so hard on its violent ejector drops that it hurts my legs on the way up and it hurts my butt when I land back into my seat. But I'll take that ejector airtime any day. My pick for the most painful Schwarzkopf is actually kind of a throwback. It was revolution back when I had over-the-shoulder restraints and a lap bar. This isn't Schwarzkopf's fault, but what a miserable experience. Revolution did not open with shoulder restraints, but they were added later and lasted for years until 2016 when the park overhauled the coaster, gave it VR, a fresh coat of paint, and trains with just a lap bar. There was so much needless headbanging that is now gone. So bravo, Schwarzkopf. All I have to complain about is the pain from great ejector and headbanging that doesn't even happen anymore. Let's move on to a wooden coaster manufacturer, CCI. Wooden coasters need a lot of attention and it's ultimately up to the park to make sure it's on a maintenance schedule to retract the parts that need it on a yearly basis. Three CCI coasters come to mind when I think of painful experiences. One of them is Boulder Dash at Lake Compounds. This was painful, but bearable. I got three rides in a row and I could have gone for more if the park hadn't closed. Another one is the boss at Six Flags St. Louis. This gave me a headache on the first run, and I stupidly came back later on in the day for another headache. But these don't compare to the pain I felt on the legend at Holiday World, especially in a couple spots where the train bottoms out and it starts jackhammering. On the last couple of trips, I haven't ridden legend more than once. Once was more than enough abuse. From CCI to GCI, let's talk about more painful woodies. GCI's first woody resides at Hershey Park, known as Wildcat. This isn't a pleasant ride, but it's not the worst. How about a more modern GCI, Thunderhead at Dollywood? This is more thrilling than Wildcat, but it still has some painful moments. But GCI has beaten me up worse. One of their newer coasters is Gold Striker at California's Great America. And even though this is seven years old, it could really use some help. After five rides, this officially did me in. 
But there was one ride that had me down and out after just two rides, and that was Roar at Six Flags America. This is another early GCI from the 90s, and its headache to fun ratio was not in its favor. There was really nothing redeeming about Roar. I went in with a mild headache and I came off with a savage headache that not even Advil can get rid of. RMC and Six Flags America need to work together to make this right. One manufacturer that's known for its rough rides is Aerodynamics. One of their uncomfortable rides is Corkscrew at Cedar Point, but it's small and it doesn't bring enough pain for this list. Another painful coaster just bit the dust, Vortex at Kings Island. This one was a lot to take. I remember stomaching a re-ride back in 2018 while my brother was perfectly okay sitting that one out. But for the most painful arrow, I'm going even bigger. Nope, not Magnum. This is Desperado at Buffalo Bills Resort and Casino. If you ride in the front, it's not so bad. If you ride it in the back, it's insane, especially in the first half. Sometimes arrow coasters have bad transitions and good maintenance, like Viper at Six Flags Magic Mountain, and these are okay. But an arrow with bad transitions and poor maintenance will really beat you up, especially when it hits speeds of 80 miles per hour. The drop, the swooping turnaround, and the weird airtime hills will bruise you up. Luckily, Desperado loses its speed after the mid-course breaks, so the second half is a lot smoother. A manufacturer known for its smooth coasters is Morgan, and of the four I've ridden, I had a hard time finding the most painful one. In fact, I can't deem any of them painful. If I were to pick the most painful element on a Morgan, I would say it's the bottom of the first few camelbacks on Steel Eel, and this is because you land back in your seat so hard after getting all that airtime. No complaints here, Morgan, but we'll see if you can keep it up with the coasters I'll get on this year, Mamba and Wild Thing. Speaking of manufacturers with a small catalog in the US, let's talk about Togo. Unlike Morgan, this has a reputation of being rough and painful. Shockwave and Windjammer had their issues, but the most painful one is the Big Apple coaster at the New York, New York Hotel and Casino. Here's another huge coaster hitting high speeds with bad transitions. No, awful transitions. If it had just lap bars, it would be okay, but it doesn't. It has those little pointless shoulder restraints that come down from above. Every time the ride hits a bad transition, my neck went flying into these shoulder restraints. All of these bad transitions are also hard to see coming unless you're in the front row, so you are at the mercy of the Big Apple Manhattan Express roller coaster. Another manufacturer known to bring the pain is Vacoma, and even though their new stuff looks solid and smooth, their stuff from the 80s and 90s is still around for the long haul, and it's a lot less friendly to your head. I don't find the boomerangs painful at all. Some are shakier than others, but I never get head banging. But their SLCs are a different story. Most of them have the same restraints, the big, padded, bulky horse collars that come down right next to your ears. Your head will be playing pinball on either side of this. Some parks have tried to alleviate this problem with new restraints. Six Flags New England knocked it out of the park with its vest restraints. Kentucky Kingdom also tried, but they failed pretty hard. T3 has a soft strap lap bar model, and it's a pretty serious thigh crusher. I didn't have the worst ride on T3, but if I tried it again, I'm afraid I wouldn't be so lucky. I could see how ugly that could get really fast. For now, the SLCs bring the most pain of any Vacoma model that I've ridden. Vacoma's Sansei Business Associate is SNS, a manufacturer that isn't known for making rough coasters. Of all the SNS coasters I've ridden, not a single one was rough or shaky. But that doesn't mean it doesn't bring some pain. The first one I want to mention is actually a specific scenario that you could easily avoid. And this is for their free spins. When you sit down and pull your vest restraint down, pull it down as far as it will go. Do not leave yourself any room to move around on an SNS free spin. I made this mistake once, on my second ever ride on a free spin back in 2017, on Batman the Ride at Fiesta Texas. I won't go into too much detail, but this is one scenario where you definitely want to staple yourself. But my pick for SNS is something that's impossible to avoid, and that's the hang time moments on El Loco at Adventure Dome. I'm happy that this only has a lap bar, but that thing digs into your lap when you're hanging upside down and it could really leave a mark. That's the price you pay for good hang time, so it's not necessarily a bad pain, but it still hurts nonetheless. Let's talk about another smooth steel manufacturer, Gerschlauer. Even though their coasters are generally smooth, some of them seem to have a jolt that leaves you wondering what just happened. Like there's something that just wasn't aligned right. You feel this on Mystery Mine and Hang Time. They aren't necessarily painful, it's just like a hiccup in what's otherwise a pleasant and smooth ride. Mystery Mine may be a little more uncomfortable because it's older and it has shoulder restraints, but Hang Time has had an issue with some shakiness since the first day it opened. But I'm not choosing a moment from these rides for this pick. For that, I'm choosing the pothole that you feel on the front row of TMNT Shellraiser at American Dream's Nickelodeon Universe. I first rode this in the back and I thought that the ride was fine. 
But once I moved to the front, I felt the painful pothole at the bottom of the 121 and a half degree drop. Unlike the other Gerslauers, this one hurts and it makes me want to take the back row from now on. It's a brand new ride and hopefully they can figure out how to fix this. Moving back to the wooden coasters, let's look at PTC. This manufacturer has some of the oldest wooden coasters under its belt, but a lot of those old ones are remarkably smooth. Comet, Blue Streak, Phoenix, Racer, Rebel Yell, just to name a few. Some of these coasters date back to the 1940s and are running great, but it's a coaster that was built in 1973 that takes this honor. Great American Scream Machine at Six Flags Over Georgia. I left my thoughts on this coaster back in my video talking about my experience at Over Georgia, and I talked about how unbearably rough it is, even though it has a good layout and it has good airtime. It's hard to overlook the roughness. It's one of those coasters that will always stick with me as one of the roughest of all time. PTC tends to be on the smoother side, but the DIN Corporation can't claim the same even though their coasters are much newer. They have a lot of bad choices to choose from, most of which are defunct, but the worst of the worst is unfortunately still operating. This is Predator at Six Flags Darien Lake. Six Flags, what are you doing with this thing? You took over Darien Lake in 2018 and you have this hunk of junk that would be absolutely perfect for the RMC treatment. Two years later and nothing yet. Hopefully soon though. An RMC would be a perfect fit for this park and Predator is one of the most brutal wooden coasters I've ever ridden. One more wooden coaster manufacturer for now. This being one forming in the 21st century, the Gravity Group. None of their coasters are awfully rough. After all, none of their coasters are more than 15 years old. I'll ride Hades 360 this summer, so that opinion may change. But for now, there are a few coasters that just kind of grind on you and it makes it hard to marathon. The ones that come to mind are The Voyage, Ravine Flyer 2, and Boardwalk Bullet. These don't have jarring rough moments, they're just big and fast and don't run that smooth. So after a few rides, you really start to feel it. The most painful gravity group is sadly one of their newer coasters and also one of my favorites. Mind Blower at Fun Spot Kissimmee. I know there are some theories about why this 2017 coaster was rough from the start, most of which involve construction miscues, but this thing start to finish was a grind. I still rode it eight times the first time I was there, that's how good the coaster is. But if it was smoother like a newer Woody should be, it would rank a lot higher for me and definitely crack my top 50. Back to steel manufacturers, let's take a look at Maurer. Their spinning coasters and wild mice are not that rough or painful, so that leaves Hollywood Rip Ride Rocket. This is one ride I desperately need to re-ride. It's been over eight years now, and I loved it back then, but most people who ride it today claim it's rough. I'm not gonna argue with them because it's been so long, and if they're right, then this has to be Maurer's most painful coaster. Let's pick off an easy one and talk about Zamperla. They mainly make family coasters, but they aren't getting off the hook that easily because they are responsible for the Volaire model. The one I rode was Time Warp at Canada's Wonderland, and from the time we left the spiral lift to the second we hit the brakes, my head was pounding side to side against the restraint. There was nothing I could do except for press my face against the chin rest and wait for it to be over. What a terrible torture device. But yeah, when I get back to Canada's Wonderland this summer, I will be riding it again. This next one is hard. They make pretty smooth launch coasters and have been doing so for over two decades. Premier Rides. One beef that a lot of people have with Premier is their so-called comfort collars. I don't hate these. They don't really even touch your shoulders and basically act as a seatbelt to keep your restraint in place. But they are responsible for the most painful moments on a Premier coaster. This one I'm calling a tie between the Skyrocket 2 models and West Coast Racers. When the Skyrocket 2 with comfort collars comes over its vertical twisted drop, and when West Coast Racers launches into its high five on the white side, you get some fantastic lateral ejector. But this is when your neck will become acquainted with a comfort collar. This could be painful and take away from some of the joy from that airtime moment. Without those comfort collars, this would be fine. Superman at Discovery Kingdom and Phobia at Lake Compounds don't have them and they're fine. But the Skyrocket 2s in the SeaWorld chain do have them, so we're stuck with the neck banging. A small price to pay for a great moment of airtime, but definitely an unnecessary one. One of the more popular and up and coming manufacturers, Mock Rides, is next on the hot seat. People seem to like the lap bars on their newer launch coasters, like Manta at SeaWorld San Diego and Copperhead Strike at Carowinds. I think these tighten way too easy, even when I'm trying to hold them up, so by the time you hit the final brakes, it can be uncomfortable. But this pales in comparison to the most painful Mock Coaster, and that's Coast Rider at Knott's Berry Farm. Two words. Shin guards. Back in 2014, an eight-year-old boy tried to get out of the car before the ride was over and severely injured his foot when it got caught in the ride platform. Shortly after I rode this for the first time in 2017, it got shin guards to prevent people from sticking their feet out before the ride was over. 
This makes the ride painful for adults riding it and makes me just skip it most of the time when I go to Knott's. We're down to the big manufacturers now, and you all know what's coming. Skyline. Their most painful coaster is Harley Quinn Crazy Coaster at Six Flags Discovery Kingdom. This thing is impossibly rough. It makes me wonder if the person who designed it had any clue what they were doing. How can a brand new steel coaster with simple maneuvers feel like you're in a washing machine? This thing sucks, one and done. Okay, the big manufacturers for real now. Let's talk Intamin. Lots of choices here. The easy answer would be Green Lantern First Flight, AKA Vipair at La Ronde, the dreaded American Zaxpin. This wasn't as painful, it more made my eyes wanna pop out of my head. So I'll give this a pass on this category. Some other notable painful intimates. King de Kaz launch is incredibly shaky and can give you a headache. La Vibora will bang your legs around in the back of the sled, especially when it rolls into each of the brakes and the sled has to straighten out. American Eagle is so rough in some spots that the train actually starts bouncing up and down. Flashback would pound your head into mush every time it hit one of those stupid hairpin turns. But there is one Intamin that stands out above the rest when it comes to a painful ride. And at this point, I think you all know where I'm going with this. They don't call it Thigh Crush for nothing. That's right. Sky Rush at Hershey Park has those awful lap bars that dig more and more into your legs as the ride goes along. And yes, this thing does have terrific ejector airtime, but instead of that euphoric feeling you get when you're being ejected with other Intamins like El Toro, you feel that lap bar actually trying to sever your legs from the rest of your body. These are awful, awful restraints. And I don't want to hear how necessary they are to accommodate an aggressive ride like Sky Rush. These are just poorly designed and it's crazy that Skyrush has gone eight full seasons without fixing the problem. We've reached the final boss, the best of the best. This is RMC, the king of the smooth coaster. None of the RMCs are that bad, so I don't want anyone thinking that anything I'm about to say makes me a drama queen. But I gotta pick one, and there are some moments that aren't exactly comfortable. And I got punched in the face by Mike. My car crushed when I left. The RMC Raptors have aggressive airtime in several spots, and those harnesses will dig into your shoulders. These would be better with lap bars, but for now, I guess that's the price you gotta pay for good ejector. Twisted Colossus also has some good airtime moments in the front row, but honestly, I don't like it in the front. The airtime shoves you forward into the lap bar, whereas in the back, it lifts you straight up out of your seat. The front is more painful and the airtime is low quality. That leaves the RMC Topper Track wooden coasters. My last rides on Lightning Rod showed me that some retracking should be in its future to address certain problem areas. But my pick for this one is Outlaw Run at Silver Dollar City. This is three years older than Lightning Rod, and the track has more wear and tear. And the shaky elements cause my lap bar to come down and staple me by the time we hit that barrel roll finale. Not much to complain about with RMC, but Outlaw Run could definitely use some improvement that may bump it even higher in my top 50. So that's gonna do it for this episode as we break down coasters by manufacturer once again. Let me know what you think about my choices and which ones you would have picked for these manufacturers. And just a reminder to check out OK Coasters channel. Click that card above or check the description below. You will be impressed. If you like this video, don't forget to give it that thumbs up. And if you're new here and wanna see more content like this, please consider subscribing. Thank you all for watching and I'll see you all next time.